and some amazing technology that is going to open up uh, massive opportunities for the immersive technology landscape. And without further ado, I'm going to have these guys introduce who they are um, and give us a little background on, on where you come from and maybe what, what brought you to this project that, that is so special. So I think we'll kick things off with Daniel. Okay. Okay, so I am uh, Daniel, Daniel Greenberg. I lead the project together with the wonderful team, the professional and the executive team. Um, I've been uh, developing uh, technology since uh, the last uh, over 40 years, starting in a, a, a computer vision and then a, a artificial intelligence, a complex, a, logic systems, embedded systems, and for the last uh, 12 years, I'm focusing in uh, augmented reality glasses, or more precisely, how to integrate virtual information and contents of all kinds into the real world. Um, and what we are doing, like uh, everybody, everybody else is trying to create the right uh, glasses. Um, beside that, I'm a professional musician, which uh, gives me a, for me, a very important uh, additional perception of what we are doing, because actually creating music is um, in many ways creating a reality. And that's about me. Good. Oh, I love that. Like the music is creating reality too. I agree. I believe that 100%. Cool. Let's bring it on over to Mike. Mike, share a little bit more about you and your background and maybe your favorite drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now you're talking. Okay. So I'm Mike Meyer. I'm the director of business development for Element. My history is like over 40 years in a, mainly in the software industry. I started coding back when computers were paper tape and 8K of core was a lot of memory. And I progressed from there, drifted into uh, the business side of the software business, mainly worked for international companies. I won't bore you with a blow by blow description. My last uh, nine to five, I was corporate vice president of SAP. And after a while, I kind of got sick of the corporate life. So I took early retirement and started uh, kind of working with, uh, with startups in various capacities as an angel investor, as a mentor, advisor. Daniel, I, I know for a few years now, and one day he called me and he said, I've seen this great technology at the university. And he showed me the technology. And on the spot, I decided to retire from my retirement and join the company uh, <clears throat> as the business development person. And yes, my favorite drink, as you allude to, is beer. But uh, hey, that's another story. <laughs> I love it. So I heard. So I heard from the scientists how they kind of got started um, and how they won a, a a competition, and that's kind of how people started to see about what they had been building in the lab. And now we've heard how Mike uh kind of got started in here. Daniel, I still haven't heard, and and I'm I'm eager to hear. How did you find out about what these guys were doing in the lab? Walk us through that. Well, actually, they they called me over the phone <laughs> and they told me, please come and see. And this was the way, you know, the, the connection was made. I mean, um, simply as that. Was it like an immediate, like, wow, this is amazing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, eventually, what they are doing is um, they are solving the the the, the most uh, uh, difficult, um, um, you know, the the most difficult uh, issue that we are dealing in uh, in, in in the hardware of uh, AR glasses. Yeah. The, the 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 biggest restriction, which is the cultural restriction. Uh, people don't want to wear 
uh, you know, ridiculous devices on their face. And as simple as that, okay? So because you walk in the street, you, you know, this is part of your personality. And allowing to create, uh, I mean, to make any kind of glasses, mm -hmm. as I wear, Mike wear, you wear, uh, and, and those to come uh, AR capable, this is something that it's uh, extraordinary. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's what we were waiting for that for many years. So yes, I was really excited. Yeah, the, same with me immediately after meeting you and, and seeing what the solution was, I was like, this is revolutionary. Um, and I really love not only just the technology, but also this sort of um, this like business model, whereas everybody else that's building the AR glasses, they're building every single part of it. Um, everything, like they're, they're building out the product as a whole piece. And essentially what we are allowing is any type of glasses maker, retailer to be able to build that augmented reality. Now that is how you actually push an industry forward. So that's how, that's why I got super excited. Now, here are going to be some like a little bit more um, diving deep into some of the, the challenges that we are currently seeing, um, you know, with taking the product out of the lab and into the engineering integrations, um, because we're going to be needing so many partners. Um, so I guess maybe for maybe both of you can can um, jump in here. What are some of the challenges that that um, we see now, and maybe some of the challenges we may be seeing in the in the uh, the, for the future? And what are some of the ways that we can start to overcome those? Mike, you want to answer? Uh, look. <laughs> We are now working uh, really with some of the major brand names in the world. We have really done no marketing. Somehow they've heard about us and they've, uh, they are, they've contacted us and some are actually coming to visit us uh, next month in Israel. Um, you know, like, like any project, to take technology out of a lab and into mass production is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, no doubt about it. Uh, we are talking with some uh, uh, metal surface manufacturers and we hope that in the next uh, two or three months we can prove that what we can uh, produce in a laboratory on a small scale, we can also produce on an industrial scale in, in plants. Okay, so that's from a, from a hardware point of view. Now, if you look at the AR market today, it's like $20 billion, okay, and it's projected to grow to like $80 billion in five years. There's like a 30% uh, growth rate. And there's some really great applications out there, but they're all, 90% you know, of them are based on, uh, on, the, on your smartphone. You know, retail, education, uh, repair, maintenance, medical. Okay, so what we want to do is once we have seed units available and we're looking at like a 12, 15 month window to approach a lot of the software developers and get them to, to transform the application from phone into the glasses. And I am sure that they can think of applications which we haven't thought of. And the wow effect will be just amazing that through your most sensitive uh, uh, organ, okay, your eyes, you can see things that you want to see when you want to see it uh, in a natural way and not having to pick up your phone and you know, stick your face in a phone. So that's, that's really the way we, we see it. I think that, um, I mean, I, I see three different challenges to overcome. The first challenge is uh, the technology. As uh, Mike said, it's always a challenge to bring technology from the lab to the mass production uh, facility. But I'm, I'm not uh, concerned about that. I, we know how to do that. And I think that uh, this is not our main concern. The second uh, 
component is the, the use case and the contents. You need to have, you know, enough contents and enough services for people to, you know, to start using it from the very beginning and, uh, and be efficient enough. A new gadget with a new, a, a new possibilities. The third component, which is the real, the real hard component is the cultural acceptance. Because eventually what we are doing is modifying the, the way people see the real world, because we are superimposing new contents, uh, new information. Uh, and, and, and it sounds like, you know, Okay, so what's about it? But 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 eventually, this is I think the main challenge for people to 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 get you know to to to, to want to use this to 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 be able to understand this new reality, okay. and it has something to do also you know with music because. Uh, 100 years ago, you could uh, hear music also only if you had a radio in your house. And uh, 200 years ago, you could hear music only if uh, you had an instrument to play or some, somebody playing for you. And about um, 50 years ago, there was a new technology allowing you to put headphones and walk in the street with music, carrying the music with you. And this was extremely, extremely innovative. Mm -hmm. And um, a short uh, story, a couple of years ago, just before the, the corona started, the corona crisis started, I was traveling uh, in the uh, Sahara Desert in Morocco. And I met these uh, this, uh, people, you know, living in the desert. Uh, and and I, I, for the first time to one of them, we, we had, I mean, they spoke uh, some French. And so for the first time, I put headphones in her ears and played rock and roll. And he was so shocked. He threw it away and just ran away and came back just the, the, the next day. So this is this is something that we take for granted, but it's not it's it's nothing for granted. Putting uh, glasses to people mm -hmm. and letting them to see a new kind of reality, integrating digital information into the real world. It's not. Uh, it's not for granted. I mean, this. This is. I think this is the main barrier, mm -hmm. the cultural barrier, the the cognitive barrier, the 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 psychology bio barrier. I think that you know the the cultural also comes along with the other questions of you know like protection, data protection privacy, like a lot of that actually comes into play too. So that lumps under that cultural exception, uh, acceptance as well. Very interesting. Now I want to- yeah. um, and, I and, and therefore, just to add something, and therefore it's so much important that the glasses will be, you know, as the glasses as you know already, yeah. and not something new. I mean, because this is part of the, of, of the obstacle. You know, having something in your face that you, you you know how to put it, you know how to carry it, you know how to use it. Nothing new there. This is extremely important. Yeah, like I'm, you know, I have a pair of like these massive like hardware glasses that I've been trying to play with for the past week. Keeps falling off my face, heavy. Um, and and I always think like, at what when will we get to that point? when somebody's walking around saying, where are my glasses? And we'll be able to say, hey, they're on your head because they're so lightweight, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I freak out when I lose my phone. I'm like, where's my phone? And it's like in my hand. So, you know, I'm, 
would I think when we get to the point when people start doing that, we we would that's our like tipping point. We know we've done our good job. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. So I want to talk about a little bit, um, you know, talking about partnerships because that's essentially like our entire business is partnerships. Um, and along with, you know, other startups that are building now in immersive technology, you do need to rely heavily on, on partnerships and going that route. Um, and it's not always clear cut on how to go about them and how to structure those partnerships. Um, so the question I have for you, maybe I'll start with Mike, is, uh, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you've seen uh, with either startups, because you've mentored startups before and you are an angel investor, um, when they approach partnerships? Um, what are maybe some of the different like mentalities that, that need to be uh, thought about in a different way uh, in terms of uh, going towards making a partnership with a larger corporation? Okay, well, first of all, you know, there's the, the issue of a very small company startup usually working with a very large uh, organization. So, so there's a mismatch, there's a tension there right away. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, you, you have to put content into the word partnership. I think a lot of people make a mistake and they enter into a partnership. That's not really a partnership, okay? It's a supplier, uh, uh, buyer type of relationship, okay? And that is always problematic because, hey, if I can uh, sell to somebody else a better profit, okay, then I'll do that, okay? So a partnership has to be a partnership where both sides have a commitment, both sides have a clear win-win strategy, okay, to make that particular product or service um, a success. So, uh, so I think the most important thing from my perspective is to look at it as a, as a partnership and not as a... Uh, a supplier customer type of a relationship and that's what we're trying to achieve and we're doing this on three levels one is the manufacturer of the meta services okay who we want to be a, a partner not just a supplier we're also talking uh, uh, to an odm to produce electronics okay and we're talking to uh, uh, eyewear uh, retailers or integrators who will be integrating uh, into their eyeglasses and selling them. Okay, so we're really looking for partnerships at three levels uh, from the manufacturing of the product type of view. Okay, but if we now go into what uh, Daniel said about the, the, the software, uh, okay, then we have to find a new partnership by allowing the soft, uh, software uh, producers to see the business opportunity for them mm. to produce software for our devices. I love it. Daniel, do you want to add to that? Because I, I don't think we've, we've even mentioned about what uh, the software that we have. <laughs> we've mainly been talking about the glasses. So maybe um, you can introduce some of the software that will be uh, complemented into the hardware that we are building with all these partners. Yeah, well, one of the questions that uh... People ask when we start talking with them, you know, potential uh, partners or um, developers. Okay, so eventually, how a museum manager uh, will place contents uh, uh, on the, you know, on the pictures or, you know, art or any kind of. Uh, so, so, so this is a good question. So our approach is that virtual uh, contents of all kinds, uh, integrating, integrated into the real world should be managed and distributed in such a way that everybody can, you know, like, like it's like picking from a, a, a physical uh, uh, object and put it in, in, in a certain place in, in, in a street or in a room or whatever, as simple as that. And from the other side, people using this content uh, through such an application, they want to use it uh, in their own personal um, 
way. I mean, if if I uh, will uh, see uh, as a tourist uh, some information in the Tour Eiffel in uh, Paris, uh, so possibly I will prefer to read it in Hebrew because this is my language. Mm -hmm. And you, Casey, will prefer to to have it in English because this is your angry, uh, uh, language. And if I'm a, a doctor in a hospital, a surgeon, uh, my info, the, 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 the relevant information will be for me on the patient different than the information that the nurse, which is taking care of, uh, you know, of the patient uh, will have. So we are creating, we already created a concept a very clear concept of such a software, uh, a content uh, management platform, allowing to any content uh, provider to place and distribute uh, uh, virtual contents anywhere in the globe. Uh, again, in you know, in the streets, in in a, in the classroom, in a whatever in a museum and to any user to use through a very simple application. So I don't need to, as a user, I, will, I, I don't need to, to download each time I visit a place, uh, a new application or a certain application. Everything should be very simple, very friendly, also for providers, content providers, and also for content users. Mm -hmm. So we are developing such a platform and which uh, will allow, uh, you know, simple use and, and uh, simple and friendly use for everybody. I love it. I think that's a, a really exciting, um, especially if there's any developers out there um, who are thinking about, you know, what are some of those, what is the direction we can take our company into the future? Um, in the next two years, in the next three years. I think there's a massive opportunity. And so <clears throat> with that, to kind of like close out our session um, with you, Daniel and Mike, um, what, you know, from, from your perspective, what kind of opportunities do you see for other companies or startups to work with us in this sort of capacity? What, what would you like to see uh, what are you open to and uh, what some of those maybe like crazy ideas that you haven't told anybody yet? Well, you know, we are open for partnership. That's you know, a general statement. Uh, I, I think that I'm sure that some of our potential partners, especially in the software field, have applications which we haven't thought of. Okay, so we are extremely open. We welcome them to contact us to talk about it, okay? And we'll certainly uh, listen and, and move forward with them. Daniel, do you have anything to add there? No, not really, because uh, you know, we have so many thoughts and so many ideas. <laughs> but uh, to conclude, I can say that uh, you know, sometimes I think, well, what are the, the technologies that uh, influenced the humanity the most? Because there are so many technologies, you know, traveling in a car, flying in an airplane, uh, talking on a smartphone from the street, so many things uh, that uh, actually changed uh, things. Uh, and for me, of course, the electric guitar is a huge technology changing culture, but I'm quite sure that AR glasses will be the most significant uh, cultural changer uh, because actually it changes the way you see reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it changes the, the it changes everything. It changes, uh, you know, how you your perception of of the of of of, of everything. And there are so many so many things to do. I mean, 
not just allowing you to see, uh, you know, contents or get services in the uh, anchor to the real world, but also helping you to get decisions. Mm -hmm. Go left, go right. Uh, you prefer to 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 see this. Uh, I mean, actually, what I think is that eventually, uh, AR glasses will change our life the way uh, navigation applications change the way we get from one place to another, making it much, much more simple, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, and much more efficient, time consuming, which is a huge thing today, time consuming, how I use my time. Yeah. So I think that we are, you know, it's uh, it's a huge challenge, but this is a technology that will change everything. I agree 100% and I'm so excited to uh, be on this journey. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much. I think that this is a really fantastic session and I hope all the developers and other uh, founders with developing agencies um, do reach out to us in the future because there's some amazing stuff that could be made. So thank you again, gentlemen. Thank you, Casey. Thank you very much.